or at the gang. So currently we have our register form right here. And when a user types in the details, their email and their password into this form, then at the minute, all we're doing is printing those values right here at the bottom when they click on this button. Instead, what we want to do is take those values, the email and the password, and use Firebase Auth to sign that user up with an email and password. So far, we've only seen anonymous signing. This is going to be something different the other way using email and password. So first of all, we have to register the user and then later on, they can sign in with that username or rather that email and that password. OK, now the first thing we want to do is to make sure that a user actually types values into these different fields. And if not, then prompt them to do so. So in essence, we need a little bit of basic validation in the app itself before making any request to Firebase to create a new user, because we don't want to make that request with two empty values or one empty value. So to do this, we're going to make use of some of Flutter's built in validation features. So first of all, what we need to do is define a form key, and that's going to be a global key of type form state. So inside the state object, let me just paste this in first of all, and you can see it's a final property. It's also private denoted by that underscore. It's called form key, but you can call it something else if you want. And that's equal to a global key and that's of type form state. Okay. So this key right here, we are going to use to identify our form and we're going to associate our form with this global form state key. So to do that, we need to come down to our form and this will all make sense later on as we start to validate our form. We need to come down here and we need to say, OK, well, this form widget is going to have a key and it's going to be equal to the form key that we just created right here. So what I'm doing here is associating this global key, this form key with our form. And that's basically going to keep track of our form and the state of our form. And in the future, if we want to try and validate our form, we can do so via this form key because we can access some validation techniques and states from this form key because now it's associated with our form because we've specified that this form has a key and it's this global key that we created right here. So that's all it's doing. It's creating this global key that's going to help us track the state of our form and help to validate it. So down here in the on pressed event, currently we're just printing these things. What I'm going to do is cut those and I'm going to replace them with an if check. And right here, I want to check is our form valid at the point in which we click on this button and this function fires. Now to do that, I can use our form key. So I can say underscore form key. Then on that user property called current state to get the current state of the form and to find out what values are inside those form fields. And then on that, on the current state of the form, I want to use a method called validate. And this is going to validate our form based on its current state at this moment in time that we click on this button. Now, this right here is going to evaluate either true or false, basically. And if it's true, then it means we have a valid form and we can execute some code to maybe send a request then to Firebase to sign this user up. If it's false, it means that the form is not valid and maybe we'll show some little helper text to say, look, you need to fill this field in or something like that. Now inside here at the minute, I'm just going to put these back in, print the email and print the password, right? Now, how does this thing right here know whether our form is valid? Because we've not actually specified anywhere whether things are required or any other kind of validation. So this validate method actually uses some validator properties on these different form fields. Now we don't have any validator properties on those form fields at the minute. So let's create some because these validator properties allow us to run a function to see if that particular form field is valid. So for example, this first one right here, I'm going to create a validator property and this is going to be a function. This function takes in the current value inside that particular form field at that moment in time. And over here, we're just going to return a value. Now we're going to return one of two things, either a null value if this particular form field is valid or a string, which is going to be the helper text if it's not valid. 
So first of all, we need to evaluate something to determine is this form field actually valid? Well, I'm going to say it's valid only if it's not empty. So what I'm going to do is take the value that we receive in this function and say is empty and then question mark, right? We're going to do a ternary operator to evaluate this. So we can return one of two values here, right? So it's going to look at the value and determine is it empty? And this will evaluate to either true or false. If it is empty, it's going to evaluate to true. And if that's the case, I want to return a string because the string then is going to be the helper text that is going to show over here in the form. So let's return a string for the case of true. And that is going to be enter an email. And if this evaluates to false, then it means there is something in that field and therefore we can return null. And if we return null, it means, look, this particular field right here is valid. OK, so let's do something similar for this other form field. I'm going to copy that and paste it right down here. So this time I don't want to check is the value empty. I want to check if the length of the value is less than six. I want the password to be at least six characters long. So I'm going to say val dot length is less than six. Now, if that's the case, I'm going to say right here, enter a password six plus cars long. And if it's not the case, if this is false, it means that we already have a value six characters or more long, and then we can return null because it's valid and we return null when something is valid. So we have a validator on each one of these fields. And the way this works is that when we run this validate function down here, it goes up to each one of these fields and it runs each function. Now, the first one over here is going to check. And if this returns this string, then it's going to say, OK, it's not valid. And it's going to place that helper up here somewhere, that string. Now it goes down to this one and it does the same thing, evaluates this. If it receives a string back as the return value, it says, OK, well, this one's not valid either. And I'll place the helper text over here, this string in this form field. And then the whole thing will evaluate as false, not valid. Now, if it receives null for every different validator function, then it is valid and this will evaluate to true and we can carry on doing something. So only when it receives null back from each one of these functions is the form valid. And that's how this works. So let me save this and give this a whirl. First of all, I'm not going to enter anything in and I'm going to press register. And you can see we have these helper text strings back here. So it automatically takes our string that we return and places them next to those form fields and colors them red. So that's nice. A little bit of validation. Now, if I type something in here and press register, now this one is fine, but we still have the error right here. Now, if I enter something four digits long, we should still get the error because this should not pass validation because we require something at least six characters long. But if I do six now, then register, then the error goes away and probably we will get in the debug console the values because once it's valid, we can then print those out. So that's a bit of validation first of all, right? So now we have this little bit of validation sorted. We can go ahead and actually try to register with an email and password. And to do that, we're going to have to go to our auth service class over here so that we can create a method inside this class to register with email and password. So let's find that comment we created earlier called register with email and password and let's create the function here. So it's going to return a future much like the rest of the functions or most of them do inside this auth service. And we're going to call it register with email and password long function name. I know. And this is going to take in two arguments. It's going to take in an email that they want to sign up with and their password and they're both strings. So string email and also string password. OK, so this is also going to be asynchronous. It's going to make an asynchronous task at some point. So we need to mark it as such. And then in here, we're going to try something and catch the error if there is one and do something differently. So let us now do the try block. First of all, first of all, we want to make a request to Firebase and we do that via this thing up here. Remember the instance of Firebase auth. 
and we're going to await this and we're going to store it in some kind of variable and that variable type is going to be an auth result much like we did with the sign on and non right here we've got an auth result right here from the action we're going to do something similar so auth result and we're going to call it result and set that equal to await and then use underscore auth and we use a method on the firebase instance the firebase auth instance called create user with email and password again long name i know <laughs> and we need to pass in two named parameters first of all the email and that's the email we get passed into this function right here which is just email and then secondly password which is just the password okay so now we have this function created and now it's going to await a response from that function okay now once we get that response we want to then do something with it let me just move this down here because it's gone up okay and underneath we can then grab the user from that result now that is a firebase user so firebase user is equal to the result dot user makes sense and we want to turn this from a firebase user into a regular user that we created a class for so let us now oops and we can't do this we have to actually name the variable so i'm going to call this user and now underneath i can say okay i want to now return a value and that value is going to be underscore user from firebase user and we're going to pass in this user right here remember we created this function way long ago and it was this thing up here okay so now we're returning that user with that uid if this is successful now if it's not successful then we're going to catch the error and i'm going to print the error so print e and then to string like so and we'll return null okay so now when we call this function from our different widgets it's going to take in the email and password it's going to try to create a user with email and password this is a built-in firebase auth method and if that's successful it's going to return us a regular user based on our user model that we created over here okay so just a very basic user so that's if this is a success otherwise if it's not a success and we can't sign in with that email and password or rather register with that email and password then we get returned null so now let's try using this function over here inside our register widget so let me copy that and go to the register widget again and down here where we print out these values instead of doing that now what we want to do is say okay dynamic result because we know we're going to get something back either null or a user and we don't know which one of those it's going to be then we're going to await this auth remember we have an instance of auth up here like that and we're going to use the method on that auth service so dot and then register with email and password and we need to pass in the email and password which are stored on the state over here so email and password so let's pass both of those in email and password like so so it's going to try and do that and it's going to wait for that to finish and we're going to have this right here as the result and that's either going to be null if there was some kind of error or the user so i'm going to check if it is null if result is equal to null then we want to do something right we want to maybe say okay there's an error here so what i'm going to do is create up here a piece of state called error so string error like so and to begin with this can just be equal to an empty string now down here if we get null back we can update that error so we can use set state to do that set state and then inside we want to pass in a function and we're going to say error is equal to some kind of error message i'm just going to say please supply your valid email or something like that okay so if it's not null we don't need to do an else clause right here and do something else because really think about it what do we want to do if the user has successfully registered well we probably want to show them the home page but that is going to happen automatically because remember we have this stream set up inside our root widget which is listening for auth changes and when a user successfully registers with firebase we get that user back and that user 
comes down the same stream. It's listening for those auth changes and it's saying, okay, now we have a user back. The auth state has changed. The user has registered and is now automatically signed in and we have that user. So automatically when we get that user, it's going to show the home page, right? So let's save this now and save this over here. And now let's try this. And I'm gonna hope that there's no errors, but there might be. First of all, I'm gonna try the validation again. So register and we get that validation. Okay, so now I'm gonna try adding like Mario. And in fact, we won't do a valid email. We'll do something that's not valid. And down here, we'll say test one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's register. And it tries to register at the minute. And it's probably gonna come back and give us an error. Now, it does do that because it's not taking us to the home page, but we're not showing the error anywhere. So, you know, like we get an error here and we update the state, we're not actually showing that error anywhere. So let's do that and let's do it below the button. So underneath the button, let's do a comma and we'll do a sized box first of all. And inside that, we'll just say height is gonna be 12 pixels or something like that. And then underneath that, we'll do a text widget and that is gonna have the text of the error itself. So we'll just say error like that. So it's gonna output that string. And then the style is gonna be text style. And inside that, we just wanna color this. So I'll say color is gonna be colors dot red. I'll also give this a font size. So it's a bit smaller, 14 pixels. Okay, so I hope this makes sense as to why I've done this. We've added this text here so that if we do get an error back right here and we update the state, then that error is gonna be displayed down here. Now to begin with, that error is an empty string, so it's not really gonna show down here, but if we do get that error, now we have somewhere to output it. So let's save this again. And you can see right here, now we can see, please supply a valid email. So that was because we got a bad response from Firebase trying to sign up and Firebase has looked at it on their servers and said, look, I can't sign a user up with these values because obviously this is not an email, right? So if I do a valid email now, so Mario at, and then I'll say the net ninja.co.uk and register, then hopefully now, yep, it does. It goes to the home screen, okay? Because we've now registered, we've got that response back through the stream, a user to say, look, now we're signed in automatically as well. And when we get that user, then we show the home screen. Now, if I was to log out, then it's gonna show this again, because now I've logged out. So I hope this is all making sense and it's all starting to kind of come together now. So now in the next video, I wanna show you how to actually sign in. We've done the register one, we can now register, but now I want to show you how to sign in.